I'm Roger with Synthesizers.com, and here's a quick tour of the Q167 LFO++ module. Okay, here's the Q167 LFO++ mounted in our system. And I'm going to set up a patch for testing. We'll start with gate. And this will be our gate multiples here. And that will go to an envelope generator. And pitch will go up here to an oscillator. We'll use the pulse output into a filter. And the low pass into a VCA, which will be controlled by an envelope generator. Okay, that's a simple synth patch with one oscillator that we can use for testing. The Q167++ is not your normal low frequency oscillator. It has a bunch of interesting features that let you create delayed waves or decaying waves or growing waves, both in amplitude and frequency. It also has a unique wave shaper. The top section controls speed. You have a manual speed control, a voltage control that will track one volt per octave so you can track with a keyboard, and an attenuator for that. The range switch lets you select between low, audio, and very low. The wave shaper is unique. You get to start with a normal wave, like a triangle wave, or a square wave, or a sawtooth, and then this switch curves that wave, either concave or convex, so you can create a sine wave, or an anti-sine wave, or some version of a curved sawtooth wave. The switch on the right lets you control the polarity from negative to positive, and then in the plus five range, you create a unipolar signal, which can be used to create a burst of gates or a waveform to control a VCA. The LFO++ has its own internal envelope generator. You can control the sustain time and the decay time. The bottom two knobs determines how that envelope is gonna be used. To the left here, the envelope causes the amplitude of the wave to decay over time. To the right, the amplitude increases over time. The speed control is the same way. To the left, the speed decreases over time. To the right, the speed increases over time. The LFO++ has its own internal VCA to control the amplitude of the LFO waveform. There's a voltage control input and a manual input. When a voltage control comes in, this knob turns into an attenuator for the incoming voltage. You can control it manually, and when you're at zero, then the envelope generator controls the amplitude of the wave over time. The gate input fires the envelope generator. It also resets the waveform so it starts at the same place every time. This is the output of the LFO right here. Okay, let's do our first patch. Let's do the normal stuff first. We'll take the output of the LFO++ and we'll run it into our oscillator to create some vibrato. We'll turn this up a little bit. Our envelope generator is turned off. We've set both the speed and the amplitude in the middle at zero. Let's get a sine wave, so we'll go up here to triangle and we'll curve it into a sine wave and we'll use the positive polarity. This is our speed. and our amplitude. Okay, now let's change over from our oscillator to the VCA, and we'll get some tremolo, which is the changing of amplitude. Vibrato is the changing of frequency. Go back to our sine wave here. This is our speed. We can do some amplitude modulation. And this is the amplitude of the wave. A little bit or a lot.
Okay, now let's use our envelope generator to change the amplitude and or the speed over time. First thing is we need a gate to turn our envelope generator on and off. And we're going to switch over here from the amplifier to the oscillator because hearing a frequency change is easier than hearing an amplitude change. Let's change this to something longer. Okay. Let's get a sine wave. That's a normal straight LFO. Now let's use our envelope generator to control the amplitude over time. So we're going to go sustain time is going to be pretty quick and our decay will be out here. So the envelope generator will start quick and it'll decay over time. And that'll be used to control the amplitude of this LFO over time. And that output will go into our oscillator. So our vibrato should de decay over time. Let's do it quicker. Notice it starts very high at first and then it decays over time. And this determines how great that effect is. Now that's the change in amplitude. Let's do a change in speed over time. Let's make the speed decrease over time. We'll turn this up manually. And we can do both. So notice it started fast and went down to absolutely nothing at the end. So the speed is higher at first and the amplitude is higher at first and both of them decay over time. Let's make it faster. Now let's make the speed increase over time. And we can change waves. Okay, now let's do something interesting. Let's do delayed vibrato. And we're going to use the sustain time as our delay. And our amplitude is going to be switched over here to the minus. So there'll be a short period of time when the key is first pressed that nothing happens. Then the decay portion will kick in and it'll be inverted. So we'll get a growing vibrato at the end. We're going to make the speed the same throughout the whole cycle. Here's our speed. 
So this sustained time now becomes our delay between our vibrato kicking in. And this delay becomes an attack when this is minus. Let's get a nicer sine wave here. Also, increase the speed over time or decrease it. There's a lot of other things you can do. Since you have a voltage control here for the speed, and you have a voltage control here for the amplitude, you can use a gate here to turn this amplitude on and off. In other words, turn the LFO on and off. And this could be used from a sequencer to create multiple beats per step, or to change the frequency so that you end up with a different number of beats per step. So this essentially creates a burst LFO also. Okay, I hope that gives you a good idea of what the LFO++ is capable of and how its fancy envelope generator and wave shaper works. See our website at synthesizers.com and go to the Q167 page. You'll see a nice data sheet there with some patch ideas.